here, but today I am starting a give it a week for the Jordana Best Lash Extreme, which I haven't taken the wrapping off. If you're new to my channel, what a give it a week is, is the my take on first impressions, because from my experience, I think you need a little time to play around with stuff to even get a good idea of how you feel about it. So I like to do these for about four or five days and um, kind of just show you me, you know, trying them out and then give you my final thoughts at the end of the week. So um, that's what we're doing in this video. Sorry, I'm wrapping it. And this is a mascara that's definitely very popular on YouTube, so I'm very excited to try it. I really hope it works for me because, I mean, it's $3, so that would be an amazing thing to be, like my Holy Grail mascara. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this. I think today I'm going to do two coats because I'm not wearing any other eye makeup, so I want my lashes to stand out. So I'm going to go ahead and open this bad boy up and get going. This formula is a lot drier than I expected, which is a good thing. I don't like wet formulas, but I really was expecting it to be kind of gloopy. looking pretty good. Gonna go ahead and add a second layer, probably just on the top. Here's what they look like. Gotta get rid of a few smudges, but in general, looking pretty good. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, today I have my second day of the Jordana Best Last Extreme. Give it a week, so I'm going to go ahead and apply my mascara. Apparently I forgot to press the record button, but it's day four of my use of Jordana Best Lash Extreme, and as I was saying, apparently didn't film. I'm trying to build it up today just to see how much it will build, so I'm currently applying the first coat on the side. I don't like the way this builds. I don't think I'd recommend doing three coats because as you can see, it just starts to get a little spidery a little fast. So that's unfortunate, but it does look really good on one coat. So it's something it's, I maybe could look past, you know? But yeah, I'm gonna just stick with two because three would just get weird. Yeah, not the most buildable. But I'll be back tomorrow for day five. Okay, so time for the last day of the first impression here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this bad boy on. Um, one thing I did really quickly mention, I did notice this morning that I had some smudges um, 
I had quite a bit of smudging under my eyes, so this doesn't remove super well. And that's something I kind of noticed throughout the week, but I really noticed this morning. So just a thing to keep in mind, but I'm going to go ahead and apply probably just one coat because that's how I like it the best. And then we'll be back for our uh, overall summary of the mascara. Okay, so I'm going to film my final thoughts on this mascara, which is again the Jordana Best Lash Extreme Volumizing Mascara in black. I'm hoping that I can keep this pretty short because I don't have too, too much to say about this. Um, but yeah, I wanted to kind of give you my thoughts, tell you how it works in general. I mean, obviously you see the demos throughout the week, so you kind of already can get a feel, but just like in general, some tips and stuff. So, um, in j the first things first, where can you buy Jordana? Um, Jordana is actually very hard to come by, at least where I'm at. So that's, that's a definite downside. You can get it at Walgreens, and for me, that's the only place you can get it. Let me know below any place you can get Jordana, and I will definitely um, look into it. It does only come in one shade, so if you're somebody who likes a lighter mascara or a brown mascara, this isn't going to be your pick because you can't get it in those colors, so that is kind of unfortunate, but if you're into a really black mascara, which I know a lot of people are, this is great for you. So let's go in real quick with the claims. They have three large claims here, which are that it's immediate extreme volume. I do agree with that claim. I think it does go on and give you a lot of volume really fast. It's a buildable form formula without clumping. I don't agree with that claim. Claim. I'll talk about that more in a minute, but I do find there is clumping with this, this mascara. You probably noticed it in the demos throughout the week. And then the long-lasting power, that is definitely true. I haven't had any problems with this smudging or anything. So those are their claims. Um, two out of three, not so bad. So I'm going to go in now and talk about some pros and cons of the mascara. First um, pro, this it, is probably the mascara that I've had the quickest application of ever. I don't know what it is about this, but in general, I usually like mascaras better when I sit and really take my time applying them, but this one, you get really amazing lashes just in a quick wiggle through your lashes. I still do recommend, of course, working it in just so you don't get the clumps, but if you don't sit and take forever with it, it still looks good, you know? So that's definite plus. I can see this being really great for someone who isn't so into makeup, just wants something that's going to get the job done. And on that note, it is great for no makeup days because it does add a lot of definition to your eyes just on its own. So I've worn this most of the week. When I've worn this, I haven't been wearing any eyeliner or anything. This is the day when I've worn the most makeup with it. So definitely great with that. And I can see since it's so black, it being good with a full-on smoky eye as well. Like I said, it does wear very well. I've worn it, obviously it's summer now, so I have a lot of humidity where I'm at and I haven't had terrible smudging. I have had maybe just a little bit of smudging, but nothing unworkable and that's kind of just a general thing with non-waterproof mascaras when it's this humid. So in general wears very well for especially for a um, washable mascara as in not waterproof. I've talked before about how I like kind of the more standard bristle wands versus the like rubbery bristles and this is one of those. Also it um, is not flexible, which I personally like. I think the flexible ones don't give you as much definition or as much volume because it's hard to get them into the roots of your lashes, and this you really can get right up against there, and it doesn't hurt too much either if that's something you've had issues with in the past. So it has both a nice brush and formula. The formula is not too wet. It's wet enough so that it does something, and it also is wet enough so that as it dries out, it will still work but it's not so wet like something like Lash Diletto by Maybelline. Well, if you like a very wet formula, you may or may not like this, but personally I don't like a super wet formula and this does, it's not the super last wet. The last big pro that I have here is that it's not only volumizing but adds some length. I mean it does focus on the volume, 
but as I've said, I think it's important for a mascara to do both because you don't want just little clumpy lashes and you also don't want super long spidery lashes. So this is not going to go too much length or too much volume. It does it all nice and evenly. So that is very important and it does it pretty now well. Now onto a few cons. I would say this clumps more so than clumping. I, I don't know if clumping is the right word. I feel like spidery lashes is more the appropriate term. I can get, they can get a little spidery in one coat, but more so if you build it. So um, personally, I do recommend just wearing one coat. I found that if I tried two throughout the week, it was kind of a bit much. So um, I guess it's not a huge issue. Like if it was clumping, and it also didn't look good, I would say that was a problem, but since it looks so good in one coat and you don't really need to do two, it's not as big of an issue. So it looks good in one coat. If you go for two or more, it will probably start to clump for you So or get spidery. So I would recommend sticking to one coat. If you're somebody who likes spidery or clumpy type lashes, then I, I know a lot of people really do, and this will definitely give you amazingly full lashes with just a bit of spideriness if that's your thing. The last con, there's not too many, it's just that it's hard to get off. Not as hard as the Rocket by Maybelline or any waterproof mascara, but it's a little bit so difficult. In general, this mascara is really great, especially for the price tag. I mean, I didn't mention the price tag as a pro just because I know that could be annoying if I just said, and it's $3. Like, obviously you want it to perform well, $3 or more, and this performs well despite the price tag. Um, and the $3 is, of course, just an added bonus because who doesn't love to spend $3 on their mascara? In general, not my all-time favorite mascara just because I don't really like a mascara to get clumpy in this one. You have to be careful on that. But I do think it's really good and I would definitely recommend you purchase it and try it for yourself. See, I think especially for $3, there's no harm in going and trying it because you're either going to love it or it's going to, I think, be okay and you'll get through it and then maybe not buy it again. So I would recommend you guys checking this out. I would out. give this probably a four, um, a good solid four. Nothing more, nothing less. I think it performs very, very well, but it's not perfect. So four stars for this Jordana Best Lash Extreme Volumizing Mascara. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. If you did, be sure to like it below. Like it below, subscribe to see more from me. I'll be back in two days with a new video. Till then, I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day, and also let me know if you check this out.